Um, so basically today, uh, as I, I present the dengue control strategy, um, please let me know if I need to go slow or anything, but at, at the same time, uh, I would uh, definitely highlight some of the biggest challenges we face. Over to you, the next slide. So dengue is the only communicable disease in the recent memory to have increased exponentially. And if you really look at this graph, which shows you the average number of cases reported to WHO per year in a 10 year period wise, you can see how the cases have increased. And actually from 2000 to 2019, the dengue has grown almost six folds all over the world. So this is a huge challenge. And I, will, I think today and during my next talk on Aedes, I will tell you why this is a challenge. And uh, especially since many of you are working on malaria, we really need to see uh, what is causing this problem. Next slide, please. So many countries in 2019 recorded highest number of dengue cases. And uh, actually we have just finishing uh, our tallying of the 2019 cases. And uh, we have, for the first time, it has crossed 5 million mark with over 5,000 deaths. And these are few of the top countries, but uh, this, this, there are many more. Dengue affects 129 countries all over the world. Next slide, please. So in this slide, sorry. So this slide basically summarizes why I'm saying this. So here you have a report of the malaria situation in the world compared with dengue. The population at risk, dengue is higher now. The number of countries affected, again, dengue is higher. And actually with the addition of Afghanistan into the list, we really have 129 countries affected by dengue. There is 390 million cases on, a, on one estimate, but on an average, uh, we record around 150 million every year. The severe cases runs into a couple of millions. The only factor where dengue is lower than malaria is in terms of death. But actually the latest estimate from the IHME group puts the death at around 70,000 in 2018. So the death is also increasing over the years. Next slide, please. So one of the challenges with dengue, which we really need to understand and capture is the problem we face with reporting. Whatever we capture in terms of the number of cases recorded, we are only taking the clinical burden or the passive surveillance, which is roughly 20%. 80% of dengue is asymptomatic and does not get reported to health, health facilities. And this is the problem with most of the arboviral cases. And uh, dengue as a disease, uh, these asymptomatic carriers do spread the virus to the mosquito. So this is, a, this is a big problem we face with dengue. Next one, please. So here, what we have done in uh, recent years is that WHO has developed a toolkit. Uh, we have completed studies in over 15 countries actually. And this is to estimate the burden of uh, dengue. And this can be done by anybody in the field just with your data. We will provide, a, there is an Excel sheet and once you fill the required data, it automatically gives you a burden. Now, why, why I'm saying this, as you can see on the right-hand side, the, this is an example of one country where we did the burden estimation and the country actually reported 10,162 cases. There were 24 deaths, almost 8,000 severe cases, but actual dengue within the community was around 1.9 million in terms of burden and the cases also was around five, half a million plus. So this just shows that burden estimation is very important part of dengue and it will help us to get resources, plan and implement prevention and control activities, understand the epidemiology and spread of the disease. And it also helps to assess the economic uh, burden of this uh, problem. Next one, please. So basically in terms of dengue control strategy, my first few slides are touching on the, the real burden of the disease and then moving on to a few of the vector control um, issue. The challenge we faced with dengue over the years. Now dengue has been there in the world recorded since the end of the world war and uh, vector control is the only core component for prevention because we do not have any medicines for dengue, neither is a, a successful vaccine. There's only a partly successful one. 
So here we have uh, the programs relied very much on vector control. And due to the fear of yellow fever, which is also transmitted by Aedes mosquito, there was a massive campaign in uh, Central and South America in the 50s and 60s, which literally wiped out yellow fever in South America. And this campaign was very, very successful with both adult and larval control. And in fact, there were limited uh, success also in Singapore and Cuba in the uh, 70s and 80s. So this success in, uh, in uh, Latin America in particular was a great uh, success story for vector control in those days, especially when you can really terminate a species in the whole continent. But unfortunately, the success was relaxed and the mosquitoes came back. So this is a, the problem which we have faced over and over again. One more entry, please. So the difficulty is the burden of the disease has increased. There are much more large cities with highly mobile population. And uh, our vector control infrastructure in this uh, environment is very limited. And so vector control has been struggling, especially in terms of dengue control. Next one, please. So we can apply the current control methods, uh, mosquito control methods, uh, of based on the past success, if it is applied carefully and thoroughly, it can reduce dengue. That's what we are seeing today. Next slide, please. So this is just to summarize uh, uh, what are the tools we have and what level of evidence. So please have a close look at the, uh, uh, the column on the right-hand side. We have the targeted indoor residual spraying, which is gathering more evidence. There is more moderate evidence here. And here, when I say targeted indoor residual spray, for dengue control, the IRS is more or less similar to malaria, but we do not spray the full house. Actually, we spray in areas where mosquitoes rest, and it is about one and a half meters from the floor. And that sort of spray operation was again successfully done in many parts of the world. Uh, and recently in Mexico, they did that in both places of residence as well as place of work because the mosquito bites during the day. So when you do that, place of residence plus place of uh, work, the, the transmission can be controlled. So that is, there's a moderate level of evidence, a larger study is in, in progress, but currently stopped due to the COVID situation. There are several traps with limited evidence, which shows that they uh, deploying traps, three traps per house in Puerto Rico, for example, can control dengue. Outdoor residual spray is similar, uh, tool, but the very limited evidence so far. Uh, indoor space spraying or fogging, as you call it, is effective with the limited, uh, limited effect, and there's limited evidence on that. And this, uh, please remember, I'm very specific. It is indoor space spray, which is uh, fogging has to be done indoor and not outdoor. And actually, outdoor fogging is not very effective at all. It is very hard to tell that because in most of our programs, outdoor fogging is used for political uh, uh, advertising because essentially it doesn't kill the, it doesn't have much impact. Then insecticide treated curtains and insecticide treated screens are good. There are evidence generating, but still very weak. Next one, please. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, please make a couple of entries. So basically for larval control, the, the, we have to target the, the uniqueness about dengue control is we have to target both the larvae and the adult for an effective control. And larval management is mainly to bring down the density. Next, uh, next, and please keep entering, please. And the objective is to maximize and reduce the adult density. The treatment cycle has to be planned with the transmission, the rainfall, and also the, the type of habitat. Commonly, it is about two to three applications annually, uh, depending upon slow release formulations. And organophosphate, temophos, is widely used for larval control. Next one, please. So here, the key challenge for larval control is the quality of the product, the cost of coverage, speed of application, and at, at what interval you apply it. And of course, the communities have to accept. Um, and we have to monitor insecticide resistance. Next one. So these are some of the new tools currently uh, being uh, tested for dengue control. The spatial repellent, uh, which is basically a, a, a repellent uh, applied on a wall, uh, like a calendar. And this transfluthrin passive emanator uh, can emanate, keeps emanating for about a month, and then you have to replace it. 
Currently, this has undergone one randomized controlled trial and uh, has shown promising result. And we are waiting for one more study. There are vector traps, which is, uh, as I said, is making slow progress. The sterile insect technique, which many of you may be aware, and you will hear more about it later on, um, is promoted by International Atomic Energy Agency, where you, so you can have both Bulbakia as well as SIT uh, combined. And um, they, they are also going for a randomized control trial soon. The last one is a Bulbakia based population alteration. Uh, where uh, Wolbachia is introduced into Aedes aegypti and it is a symbiotic bacteria and it, it moves from uh, one generation to the next quite successfully. And we have a very good result from one randomized control trial completed, which proves the public health value of this tool. So this is something uh, promising and we are, they are also going for a second study and uh, WHO will be critically assessing this uh, evidence base soon. Next one, please. So the, this uh, is a, one of the strongest evidence we have. And you can imagine that only in 2015 was the first publication of a randomized control trial for dengue ever done. And this was published in um, British Medical Journal. And this study in Nicaragua and Mexico clearly shows the evidence of community involvement and mobilization for dengue prevention and control. And this is a very... Um, uh, non-insecticide based approach with community participation and source reduction. And this, was, this has been a very successful um, uh, study with, which shows clear good evidence. Next one. So vector control basically for dengue is uh, we have to adapt to locally available control strategy. Um, we, can, we can engage communities as per what uh, Samira just explained on the global vector control response. We need to know the vector and its local ecology, which is very important. Please keep going. Um, and know the insecticide susceptibility of the vector. Next one, please. Most of the spray, both aerial and ground, have relatively ineffective. As I said, only indoor spraying, uh, when it is delivered inside the house with a thermal fog or a ULV, has shown some level of evidence of uh, uh, transmission control. Targeted indoor spray is very good, and it is promising. And more uh, studies are in full. In, in full Progress, next one. Adulticide, adulticiding alone should not be done. As I said, in, in, in dengue control, it is an, basically an integrated vector management. We have to do both larval control and adult control. And last one is basically, we hope that some of these new tools like Wolbachia and others will come into operation to, to give us something which is sustainable. We need more sustainable tools which can control vectors. So this is, uh, in summary, the real vector control strategy for dengue. Next one. Now I move to the dengue control strategy, which is promoted by WHO. We have a strategic document uh, from 2012 to 2020. Basically, our goals were to reduce dengue deaths by 50%. We had limited success there in many, in many regions. There was reduction of 30 to 35%. Uh, to reduce the dengue morbidity by at least 20 25%, we really did not achieve that because the reporting of dengue during this period significantly improved. So naturally the cases went up. We have definitely achieved the third objective to ascertain the true burden of the disease because we have a toolkit and also many countries have done this. And now IHME is doing it on a yearly basis to assess the true burden of dengue globally. So this is a this is, a, this is the only objective which has achieved 100%. And we really hope all other um, uh, objectives um, can catch up. Next one. What we have done is from this year onwards, we have revised our goals. And this is mainly to reduce uh, and aim for preventable dengue deaths to zero by 2030. This is something, uh, according to most of the experts, is achievable provided uh, we continue to promote sound management of cases in the hospitals. Countries should be able to prevent, detect, and respond to dengue outbreaks by 2030. We need to promote operational and implementation research and integrate new tools wherever possible. And the third, fourth one is to strengthen proactive disease prevention and controls in countries facing environmental and social change. Now, environmental and social change, we will talk about it as we go along. 
the overall goal is to reduce the burden of dengue on communities and uh, healthcare systems. Next one. So here, the, the foundation of all this present strategy, which we will be printing it out soon, is to build capacity at all levels. Advocacy and social uh, strong political commitment is needed. Next one. And the technical elements or the pillars of this uh, global strategy is more or less the same as the old one. Uh, we need quality diagnosis and case management, integrated surveillance and outbreak preparedness, sustainable locally adapted vector management, and engage and mobilize communities. And in many ways, this mirrors the global vector control response because more or less they are very well aligned. Next one. The enabling factors, which many of you are fully familiar with, is that we need resource mobilization and good partnership, inter- and intersectoral coordination at national and local level. There needs to be a regional network and cross-border collaboration. Actually, uh, Singapore uh, has led the way in having a cross-border collaboration across the ASEAN region. And uh, many countries are members of that Singapore network where they share confidential information among countries on movement of the virus. And the same uh, is now being implemented in uh, the American region. We also need effective communication, including risk communication. And the last one is a, a key point where monitoring evaluation has to be strengthened for dengue control and uh, dengue prevention and corrective actions taken. Next one. So basically to conclude, uh, uh, AIDS as a disease is uh, on the increase, unplanned urbanization and need for multi-sectoral uh, IVM is, is a need of the hour. As we go through this webinar, you will come across the challenge we are facing in few countries of EMRO where a Anopheles defensi and AIDS aegypti breed together in the same containers. And this gives us a very good opportunity to handle these two vectors in urban areas very well. Movement of people and goods have to be addressed. There needs to be IHR regulations coming into place. We need to deliver broad preventive health services in urban centers. And the climate change has an impact on dengue. So we need to keep a watch on that. And the last one is even more important, water stress in cities. Right now, there are cities in the world which are running short. And this is very, very worrying because I have already come across one city where we, used, we started getting uh, water by trains from neighboring province. So cities can dry shot the water because of uh, various climatic changes. And this leads to water stress. And according to the UN, over 50 cities globally will face the same crisis. And why I'm saying this is, as you run short of water due to water stress, we are going to store more water. The more water you store in and around your house, you are providing new apartments for ADIS. So we just have to be on the watch that this AIDS problem will increase in urban areas. And as urbanization increases in next to 10 years, 70% of the world population will be urban. Uh, we will have this challenge. So I stop there. Thank you very much.